Hey all, I'm Ash Noe. Let's talk about building for a multilingual world. Much of the world is multilingual. A quarter of India and two thirds of the working adult population in Europe is multilingual. The multilingual population in the United States has increased nearly 200% over the last 40 years. Developing English first or English only could limit your app's reach and helpfulness because 90% of Android devices are shipped outside of the United States and other native English speaking countries. And consumers prefer to consume content in their own language and might not make a purchase unless they can access information in their own language. The goal of this talk is to provide you best practices to internationalize and localize your app to improve your app's helpfulness and reach. Our first tip is to organize your app resources so users receive information they understand. And the key point here is to be mindful of scripts. Basics first, language, script, and region. Language is what we use to communicate and be understood by others. Script is our writing system and region is a place. For example, a user may speak Mandarin, which is one of the Chinese languages, write in traditional or simplified Chinese and live in Taiwan or China. As app developers, we organize our app resources by language, script, and region. So for example, we could place our string resources in values folders that are appended with language tag qualifiers. We can place our simplified Chinese strings in a values-zh folder, zh for Chinese. And we can serve content to users living in Taiwan in a values-zh-rtw folder, r for region and tw for Taiwan. In Android 7, we added support for scripts. So we might place our fallback string resources in a zh han t folder. Han T here stands for the traditional Chinese scripts. Android does its best to serve the best available resources to your users. So for example, if Android cannot find the correct string resource for a user living in Taiwan in the appropriate folder, it will fall back to a more generic folder, in this case, the Han T folder. And then ultimately, it will fall back to your app's default locale. However, Android will not fall back to the ZH folder because the ZH folder contains simplified Chinese strings and simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese are different scripts. In other words, when organizing your app resources, be mindful that resources do not fall back across scripts. Our second tip is to define resource configurations so your layouts are consistent. Imagine your user has set their device language preferences to be Japanese first and then English. And our application supports English but does not support Japanese. And yet the user could see the state where the text is in English and the dates are in Japanese. How is this possible if our app does not support Japanese? This initially terrifying but helpful screen can show us why. We can get to this screen by going to Build, Analyze APK, select our APK, then select Resources, select String, and then we'll notice there are a number of string configurations, a number of string resources across 89 configurations. These configurations are language tags. In other words, Android thinks that our app supports 89 locales, which makes no sense to us because our app only supports four locales. What's happening is that Android is pulling string resources from our app's dependencies, and our app's dependencies might support 89 locales, including Japanese. So Android will start doing things like internationalizing the dates and times to Japanese, because that was a uh, user's first device language preference. We can avoid this by defining a resource configurations in our Gradle file. 
which is simply passing a list of our app's supported languages. Then Android will know which locales our app supports, our APK size will shrink, and users are not going to see that inconsistent layout. Tips three and four are to avoid concatenating and reusing short strings. The problem with concatenating in code is that it makes it almost impossible for human translators to tr uh, rearrange the string sentence structure when localizing to a different language. So for example, in English, we might make an assumption and place the adjective before a noun separated by a space. A translator translating to another language like Spanish would have trouble with this because the noun usually comes before the adjective. And translating to Japanese might be tricky because words aren't separated by spaces there. So don't concatenate. Portuguese speakers, can you spot what's off? The word off here is translated as if Bluetooth were feminine, but Bluetooth is masculine. This can happen if we reuse the short string off throughout our UI, because the short string off by itself does not carry any context as to what it's referring to, whether that be internet or Bluetooth. So instead of concatenating or reusing short strings, consider providing more independent string resources for every language that your app supports. And better yet, if those string resources contain context with them and comment strings, that will help out your translators. Our fifth tip is to use message format for flexible string formatting across languages. And for this section, we're going to consider the library in the context of string plurals. Imagine for this section we have a single goal, and that's to urgently inform the user there is a single day left to do something important. Otherwise, we'll just let them know how many more days left they have to complete a task. This is easy to do in English, but more difficult in other languages because there are different forms of cardinal numbers across languages. In English, there are two forms, one and other. One maps to the quantity one, other maps to all the other quantities, two, three, and four. So we could have a single string resource last day for the quantity one, and we could have a string and days left for all the other quantities. So our goal is met in English. However, it's more difficult in other languages. For example, in Russian, there are four cardinal forms, one, few, many, and other. And one here maps to the quantity one and to the quantities 21, 31, and 41. So if we applied what we did in English to Russian, the user would get this last day message when there's 21 days left. And this is where message format is helpful because it has this equals one syntax that is unique to message format and doesn't exist in other ways of handling plurals within Android. Equals one can be used to reserve a string resource when there is a single quantity left of something. In this case, it's the last day. The message format syntax is different. Briefly, days left is a variable that we'll call later in our Kotlin code. Plural is a keyword that's letting the library know we're working with plural strings. Equals one, one, few, many are keywords that are mapping our quantities to the string. Our strings go on curly braces, and the pound sign here is a placeholder for the quantity. In our code, we'll pass the string, for, the string resource into the message format API. And then we'll format the string by mapping the quantity one to the variable days left. Then the user in their UI would see that last day message, and that will work for all languages. It's important to call message format from Android ICU because there's multiple message format libraries within Android, and the one from ICU has the best internationalization capabilities. Message format is really robust. It can be used for flexible string formatting across languages. Consider it for ordinal numbers, dates, times, gender, and nesting complex message strings. 
After you've localized and internationalized your app using those tips, you can take advantage of a new feature called Per App Language Preferences. Before we talk about what this feature is, we'll talk about why it's important by exploring two user journeys. Our first user journey. Imagine you are a Latina woman who lives in the United States. You lead a sales team and primarily use LinkedIn in Spanish to find and stay connected with your clients. However, you prefer to navigate through your phone in English. As another user journey, imagine you are traveling to the Netherlands and you need Google Maps in Dutch so that streets and businesses are pronounced correctly. You live in the United Kingdom and prefer your device in English. This feature allows multilingual users to set their app language to be independent of the system language. As a developer, you can provide this functionality to your users in two ways. First, in device settings, which is available in Android 13 and above. The benefit here is it is a centralized and discoverable location and super easy to implement. You can also create an in-app language picker, which can be backwards compatible. If you do both of these things, they sync for free. Let's talk about in-device settings first. On the right, you see a video of a user navigating through the settings app to the app languages page that shows a list of apps that support this feature. The user can then select an app and see that app's supported languages, like you can see here with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is planning to offer this feature in the upcoming weeks, and we're so happy that they considered this an easy integration with minimal code changes. Let's explore the in-app language picker next. There are two approaches to creating an in-app language picker. The first approach, which LinkedIn has done here, is to just delegate out to the settings app. So for example, in your LinkedIn app, you could, you'll be able to go to your settings, uh, press account preferences, under general preferences, select language, change your app language, at which point you'll be redirected to the settings app to change the LinkedIn app language. Another approach is to use our backwards compatible runtime APIs like Google Maps has done here. The Google Maps in-app language picker was existing, but they migrated their backend code to call our runtime APIs, um, specifically so that their in-app language picker could sync with the device settings. So no matter where Google Map users change their map app language, whether that be in the settings app or whether that be within Maps itself, Maps appears in the correct language to the user. You can learn more about how to implement per app language preferences by consulting our developer documentation or our YouTube video. All right, I hope that we have convinced you why it is important to internationalize and localize your Android application to improve your app's helpfulness and reach. Here's the checklist again, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.